Um, there are a lot of job opportunities. I'm not happy with the gas prices. I'm here because I'm representing the Democratic Party, and we come out to cast our vote for President Joe Biden. And that's why we're here, because wow. President Joe Biden is doing a lot for America. And we that's why we come to show our support. I want to show my support for my president. And I feel that uh, a lot of people are very apathetic about primary votes. And some people feel that he's too old, but I do not. New Hampshire held a Democratic pro create dependence. Right? Dependent people are much easier to control than independent people. And that goes back to the war on farming, too. I think that's one of the reasons they want to wipe out the independent producers. Independent people um, can say no. Right? Uh, people who are dependent on government, on mega corporations, do not have that ability. If your children are hungry, you'll be willing to give up just about anything, any freedom, any property. What we're dealing now with is excessive speculation driving oil prices up, not supply in demand. We've seen the same thing in the United States, too, just not quite at as large a scale. But, uh, for example, the Biden administration knocking out big parts of our energy supply and big parts of our energy infrastructure, even our, our electricity generation, under the guise of saving us from global warming. They say, oh, look, power prices are surging. Well, now you can't afford your electricity. Well, hey, I have an idea. Let's expand the welfare system so that you can now afford your electricity. And we see people like Senator Elizabeth Warren and, and uh, Bernie Sanders saying that uh, the reason prices are going up because evil capitalists are ripping you off. There's no time for profiteering or price gouging. I want to be clear about what we'll not tolerate. These are big arc increases that really hit a budget hard. This is the reason that we need Build Back Better. Yeah, right. Whose official mission is to maintain a strong economy has established a new racial equity committee and its newly appointed vice chair vowed to make racial equity central to the treasury department's mission the u.s department of justice has also taken on a political role announcing in may that it would focus on climate justice the Environmental Protection Agency attempted to dictate a national energy policy by forcing utilities to switch from fossil fuels to wind and solar, a move that was struck down by the Supreme Court as unconstitutional. The Department of Labor instituted a new rule under the Biden administration which allows private pension funds to invest on ideological grounds rather than purely for economic returns. The Office of the Comptroller of the Currency, a bank regulator, instituted a rule under the Biden administration that gives banks the right to discriminate against entire industries for ideological reasons. <coughs> and the Securities and Exchange Commission, an agency set up to protect small investors from securities fraud, announced new climate accounting standards for all listed companies. The new SEC rule for corporate climate disclosures is probably one of the most terrifying pieces of regulation to come out of the SEC in its entirety of its existence. Um, there's sort of three portions to it. It's called scope one, two, three. The idea is that at each scope, you're talking about how much emissions, carbon emissions are coming out of, of that certain activities. Scope one, pretty straightforward. It's the company's own emissions when they make a product. Scope two asks them to account for the carbon emissions of their vendors that go into the making of the product. So for example, if you're a car manufacturer, you have to go and collect all the carbon emissions for all of your providers. Well, here's what's particularly horrifying about that. Those companies themselves may not be publicly traded. And yet through this rule, they're going to go force people to go force their vendors to adhere to this. And then scope three is somehow even worse. Scope three is climate disclosures or carbon emissions disclosures around the consumer's use of the product. Scope three means there's going to be huge incentives to start tracking the behaviors of consumers, putting literal trackers on the products. Personal social credit scores are taking hold in China, where people's ability to travel, get jobs, or get into good schools is determined by their personal behavior. What they say or write, what websites they read, even how much time they spend playing video games. 
But could we ever have social credit scores for people here in the West? It seems fantastical to even contemplate that. And yet, the technology is nearly there. We're developing through technology an ability for consumers to measure their own carbon footprint. What does that mean? That's where are they traveling? You know How the are they traveling? This what are they eating? Rash. What are they consuming on the platform? So individual carbon this will footprint open your trackers. Eyes. If you want to work out your own carbon footprint, you need to know the amount of greenhouse gases like carbon dioxide you're responsible for creating. It's a difficult thing to measure precisely, and there are different definitions about how best to calculate it. But roughly speaking, there's the direct impact of using energy when we travel or to power our homes. And there's the indirect impact of the energy that's used to create all the things we use or consume. FICO, a company that calculates our personal credit scores for things like home and auto loans, predicts that ESG criteria will soon be a part of our personal credit scores. In this way, our personal carbon footprint could affect the rate at which we can get a bank loan, or even whether we can get a loan at all. Banks are becoming increasingly political. To achieve the goal of racial equity, Bank of America announced in September that it would provide mortgages to minority groups with no down payment required. An Australian bank recently took the lead in canceling loan programs for gasoline and diesel-powered cars. A subsidiary of J.P. Morgan Chase was threatened with a boycott by Missouri's state treasurer for abruptly canceling payment services for a conservative political rally there. Gun control has been another area where banks have gotten political. It started under the Obama administration with a program called Operation Choke Point. Having failed to get Congress to pass his gun control agenda, President Obama arm-twisted banks to do what he legally could not do. Operation Choke Point included... Um, there are a lot of job opportunities. I'm not happy with the gas prices. I'm here because I'm representing the Democratic Party, and we come out to cast our vote for President Joe Biden. And that's why we're here, because wow. President Joe Biden is doing a lot for America. And we that's why we come to show our support. I want to show my support for my president. And I feel that uh, a lot of people are very apathetic about primary votes, and some people feel that he's too old, but I do not. New Hampshire held a Democratic pro Governments representing over 90% of global GDP have committed to move to net zero in the coming decades. The political risks exist because they're creating the political risks on the other side of the movement. So you get the Chuck Schumers, the Bernie Sanders to adopt a really aggressive anti-oil and gas agenda. Well, you, you, then maybe there is risk, but if you don't create that risk, you don't try to ban the internal combustion engine, well, gasoline's a good, you know, good investment. America's courts recently stepped into this conflict, pushing back against the expansion of the Biden administration into the private sector. In West Virginia versus EPA, the Supreme Court ruled that federal agencies could not force utilities to switch from fossil fuels to wind and solar. The courts ruled that race-based government grants that excluded white farmers and restaurant owners were illegal. The courts ruled that the Biden administration could not force private companies to fire employees for refusing the COVID vaccine. A year ago, I was very pessimistic. Uh, I didn't think people were going to catch on to this. I thought it was more than people wanted to think about. Uh, turns out it's not. Turns out I was wrong. And it really has started to catch on, particularly in red states in the United States, Republican-run states, are reacting very adversely to what BlackRock, State Street, and Vanguard are trying to do and to what the government's trying to do. We've seen the crack in the dam. We've seen BlackRock start to hedge. We've seen State Street and Vanguard start to hedge. They're all starting to hedge on this because they know that they're out of step with the American people, whether it's the banking sector, the asset managers, rating agencies, you name it. 
they're trying to achieve their left wing goals um, through extra legal means. And it really comes down to a basic question. If we don't stop this, do we still live in a uh, democratic constitutional republic? Or are we living in a country where a group of uh, a cartel of corporations um, get to make all the decisions as it relates to the more moral and policy questions of this country without any of us taking a single vote? Wherever you are and how you address racial inequity or global climate change, these are enough important questions that we should resolve them through free speech and debate in the public square by putting people into public office who are accountable to the American law. Companies are not accountable. BlackRock is not accountable. Larry Fink is not accountable. This is the heart of the question that was an issue in 1776, where we said for better or worse, citizens decide how to settle these common political questions through the political process where everyone's voice and vote counts equally. And the problem now is we've delegated those decisions to a group of technocratic, corporatocratic actors in the private sector to settle it through economic force instead without the backstop of public accountability, without the backstop of public support. <clears throat> and uh and it's going to be are world leaders correct are we now living in a t of a chronic decline in our living standards will the things that we once had in abundance become increasingly unaffordable Developing news on the sky-high cost of gasoline, the average price of a gallon of self-serve regular gasoline creeping up to a record high again this morning, topping the previous high set June 14th. Now they are skyrocketing again, about to hit a new record high. People are angry, frustrated. While world leaders blame Russia, the root causes of this crisis go back well before the invasion of Ukraine. Gas prices will remain very high, and it also may result in some disruption. We cannot magically get sort of uh, tens or hundreds of, of gigawatts of renewable energy before winter. So it is a matter of saving energy. It's a matter of securing sources. There should be uh, more um, obligatory measures uh, to reduce uh, to reduce consumption. I think the effect of this crisis will be that Europe will be further down the path to emissions reductions than it would otherwise be. ESG is not an investment strategy. It's a disinvestment strategy. What ESG does is it goes to corporations and it tells them to get out of the business that they're actually in. For example, Exxon, pushing them out of the oil and gas discovery and recovery business, delivering reliable, affordable gasoline to American consumers and pushes them into ridiculous, uh, supposedly green energy products that don't have a high return on investment, don't work for the American consumer. The nominees by Exxon of its board of directors were challenged by a small investment activist group called Engine Number no. One. Now, Engine Number no. One was backed by BlackRock, it was backed by State Street, it was backed by CalPERS and the, the pension funds. Those three activist challengers were successfully elected to the board with BlackRock and State Street backing and assistance brought in explicitly on a slate to move Exxon away from being a reliable energy producer, the king of uh, reliable energy producers, and instead wasted shareholders money on technologies that aren't particularly clean, certainly aren't reliable, and certainly aren't yet anything like feasible. Investment in America's oil and gas industry has been steadily declining mm -hmm. as the United States systematically restricts the supply of capital and reduces its ability to produce fossil fuels. America's ability to refine oil has also experienced a dramatic decline in the past several years as refineries close across the U.S. American refining capacity has fallen by more than 1 million barrels per day since 2020. Part of the reason is overinvestment in energy production before the pandemic which caused fossil fuel prices to plummet and pushed some oil companies into bankruptcy. But much of this decline stems from the fact that good or bad for the world. That's what you've done. You, you've outsourced what should be your responsibility as a voter, as, I mean, as a citizen to CEOs of companies. Nothing good has ever come out of doing that. 
that when it comes to the gas prices, uh, we're going through an incredible transition that is taking place that God willing, when it's over, will be stronger and the world will be stronger and less reliant on fossil fuels. This incredible transition that Biden speaks about has been painful, especially for those who struggle to pay the increasing costs. But we are told we will emerge in a better, cleaner place. Will we? The idea is that renewables are better for the environment, but it turns out that they take three to four hundred times more land from solar panels than from a nuclear or natural gas plant. They require 17 times more steel and about the same amount more cement than does a nuclear plant. And then you're right, all of that additional materials becomes waste on the back end. The state of California has for almost a decade been figuring out what to do with all the used solar panels because as soon as you remove them from your roof, they become hazardous waste. It's about 300 times more waste from solar panels as from nuclear. A report by the World Economic Forum states that to meet the Paris Accord's climate goals and limit global warming to 1.5 degrees Celsius, 100 million electric cars will have to be built by 2030. However, the report also notes that the production of lithium-ion batteries for electric cars emits twice as much CO2 and uses double the amount of energy as building a gasoline-powered car. This creates what is called a carbon debt for electric vehicles. A carbon debt means that in countries like the U.S. and Germany, the average... Um. There are a lot of job opportunities. I'm not happy with the gas prices. I'm here because I'm representing the Democratic Party, and we come out to cast our vote for President Joe Biden. And that's why we're here, because wow. President Joe Biden is doing a lot for America. And we that's why we come to show our support. I want to show my support for my president. And I feel that uh, a lot of people are very apathetic about primary votes and some people feel that he's too old but i do not new hampshire held a democratic pro the growing demand for fuels the world for people around the globe the result is shortages of fuel where there had once been abundance can wind and solar energy fill the gap germany has taken the lead among western nations in implementing climate-based restrictions on energy, banning fracking, investing heavily in wind and solar, and shutting down nuclear plants. Germany is now facing critical energy shortages with plans to ration fuel and perhaps make choices whether to keep companies operating or heat people's homes this winter. Germans say it's because Russia cut off its energy ex across the globe can get down this set of similar results increasing number of blackouts in california over the last two years which is pretty terrible for such a rich large economy like californians to have blackouts at all we should not be having power outages and yet we are and the reason is is because we have spent so much money on weather dependent renewable energy sources mostly solar that we didn't spend the money to maintain reliable power plants like natural gas and nuclear plants and in fact are trying to are seeking to shut down another nuclear plant so there's the idea has been that they would use this large wind farm off the central coast of california to replace diablo canyon nuclear plant but that's totally ridiculous because first of all it would only provide half the power total of, of diablo canyon but the other issue is that you can't replace a reliable source of energy with an unreliable one, with one that depends on the weather, on the wind or the sun. And the reason is, is that we saw it last summer. We had rolling blackouts in California because we didn't have enough energy, because we had shut down so many natural gas plants and nuclear plants. We saw it also in Texas. They had spent too much money on wind turbines, not enough on reliable energy sources. And they had power outages that actually killed people during the winter. More recently, California took steps to ban the sale of gasoline-powered cars, while at the same time telling residents 
there was not enough electricity to charge their electric cars during the day. As critical as energy is in our daily lives, even more essential is food. Realize that the old threat to their monopoly power used to come from the left in this country. And, you know, the left was skeptical of the aggregation of corporate power. Citizens United in 2010. Break up big tech. That was a left-wing slogan before it was a right-wing slogan. Okay, but what technology companies realized was that, you know what? We can actually protect our monopoly power if we advance the objectives of the people who view <coughs> us as their enemies. So we'll censor content. We'll take down speech, hate speech, misinformation that you don't want to see on the internet, but we don't do it for free. Government We've provides more than you think. The other way to leave our monopoly power intact. What they get is this possibility that knowing that the market is now rigged, you're not really mostly worried about customers or shareholders. Your primary concern is who, who has my back. And the state is that entity who will bail you out if necessary, support your efforts, and help you to get rid of competitors, as in the case of social media. Uh, we see the collusion going on between the federal government and, and Facebook, Twitter, and so forth. <coughs> These federal agencies put pressure on Facebook to censor a particular viewpoint. Those companies that reflect and reiterate state narratives will be rewarded and those that don't will be punished. Federal judge giving the White House 21 days to turn over emails from officials, including Dr. Tony Fauci and Press Secretary Karine Jean-Pierre, that were sent to social media companies. It's all part of a lawsuit filed by attorneys general of Missouri and Louisiana accusing the administration of colluding with big technology companies to censor information on Hunter Biden's laptop, COVID-19, free speech on elections, you name it, they censored it. I believe this may be one of the biggest cases to reach the United States Supreme Court in this century. Why? Because if the government can compel media outlets on what they can and can't say, and what the media <laughs> reads it doesn't see, or reads it doesn't read, then we are absolutely in a tyrannical style government. This is one of the most important lawsuits, I think, of, of maybe our lifetime. The government has fought tooth and nail to prevent the public from finding out how they are pressuring private uh, social media companies. This has really just emerged in the last few weeks uh, as part of this litigation. And I think one of the reasons why there hasn't been as much litigation in the past is I, I just don't think people realize or didn't dawn on them the degree of, uh, of the, the bad behavior uh, by these companies and their collusion uh, with each other and the degree uh, to which the government um, has been leaning on them as well. We know that the government doesn't have the ability to censor speech. Biden easily defeated Congressman Dean Phillips and author Marianne Williamson in the party's first official contest of the 2024 election season. Today's primary is historic, but not but because it's the first time South Carolina is first on the Democratic primary calendar. South Carolina, you are the first primary in the nation. And President Biden and I That's are counting on you. Now you couldn't win anywhere, anywhere else. We are counting on you. We are counting on you to vote and to get everyone you know to vote, to send out text messages, to knock on doors, and to make your voices heard. The state's Democratic Party says they're excited to see a bigger investment in South Carolina, especially after recent efforts to reshape the electoral map in future elections. Still ahead on Fox force these companies or compel these companies and, and they do so on the rest because we know that they, they, they regulate these companies. We know the power of the federal government. And look, what we found since then is that this reached into the, the, the law enforcement arm of the federal government, the FBI and the Department of Justice. And they're doing everything they can to scratch and claw and fight to keep us from getting any of this information. Uh, remember, this is our government, supposedly. Um, and so, you know, the U.S. Department of Justice and Attorney General are claiming it's some sort of 
privilege that information that we're looking for. I would remind the U.S. Attorney General that there is no privilege for violating an American's First Amendment rights. We see this uh, in these cases, in these cases where the government has leaned on these, uh, you know, Twitter, Facebook, uh, these companies to censor speech that the government deems misinformation. Um, and it's pretty clear that they're not just um, suggesting. Uh, that they're, they've got all kind of regulatory tools and they've shown a willingness to use them to uh, force their will on, um, on private actors. Um, and that's why this case is so important is we need to start taking this problem of the regulatory state seriously um, and recognize that the, that the old ideas of how we try to regulate government action um, may not be enough to, to, to understand the lawlessness and the abusiveness of the modern regulatory state. While state AGs pursue legal remedies, a growing number of states have now introduced or passed laws against ideological investing of state pension money, effectively prohibiting ESG investments from public funds. In August, the state of Florida went one step further and took away the ability of asset managers to vote the shares owned by Florida pensioners and employees, as well as prohibiting political discrimination against employees. A public spat between the Disney Corporation and Florida Governor Ron DeSantis made headlines in April when Disney CEO Bob Chapek publicly fought against the Florida law that prohibits teaching of sexual topics to children in grades kindergarten through third grade. Do you feel the bills getting higher and higher every time you check out at the supermarket? Do you feel your monthly discretionary money has decreased, although your income increases yearly? Inflation is eating away at your wealth. Some global uh, world forum. This is the United States of America. We intend to, to elect, through an election system, through a democratic process, people that go to Congress or go to our state capitals, we elect governors and presidents to basically execute the policies that are created in our capitals in a transparent manner, right? Remember, laws are created through a very transparent, open forum. We don't know what goes on in these corporate, corporate boardrooms. We don't know the background of these people. We don't know the underlying investments or the other kind of maybe nefarious activities that may, may be going on. Other conservative states have joined in the effort to fight ESG, even as liberal states double down on their support for it. Wall Street giants like BlackRock, State Street, Vanguard, J.P. Morgan, Citibank, Goldman Sachs and Morgan Stanley have become the subject of state efforts to stop discriminatory lending and ideological investing. West Virginia has been one of the leading states in this effort. If we find a financial institution that is boycotting the fossil fuel industry, they refuse to lend money or finance the fossil fuel industry just based on this 